gonna go get started on that second batch. <laughs> skateboard right in the middle of the floor! Hmm. Ah, that's better. A clean hangout is a happy hangout. Oh, and now I have just enough time to go run a few errands for a nice, quiet get-together with my friends. A few moments later. Yeah, this is the best party ever! Woo! Woo! Come on, I can't believe what I'm seeing. I had this whole place squeaky clean, and now it's totally trashed! We said we were going to have a nice, quiet get-together, not a party! Oh man, this is hard to watch. I don't know how we let this party get so out of control. Yeah, and how did the hangout get so messy? <sighs> Brace yourself, Gabby, because Melissa is gonna flip out! Hey! 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 Um, I didn't know we were having a party. Yeah. I wish she would have given me a heads up. Um, but it's okay. I I got some ingredients, so I'm gonna just make some cupcakes, and I guess we can just clean up later. So. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Party on. Wait. What? How did she not get mad at us? I have no idea. Yeah, so that just happened. Believe me, I was pretty mad about it. But I saw how much fun my friends were having and I quickly realized that it was not worth losing my cool over. Besides, as long as we clean up afterwards, there's really no harm done. Um, Gabby! I think we should tone this party down a little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. Just a yeah, little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a great idea. We can clean this up, and then I have a great, non-messy game that we can play. Ah, I ah, like ah, that. Ah, All right, let's do it. Let's do it. Ready? Oh, three. down here. Okay. Yeah, right here. Three, and two, one. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Okay. Woo! Aw, that's super nice of us, right? Totally. And thanks to this remote, we can actually watch ourselves clean up in super hyperspeed fast motion. <laughs> wow, nice. I feel like we did that in like super high speed. Yeah, totally. I feel like I had super velocity speed. That was awesome. Are we ready for the game? I'm ready for the game. Are you? Yes, but maybe let's invite Melissa. Oh, yeah, right? that's okay. a great idea. Hey, Melissa! Melissa! Come join us. Let's play a game. Yeah. Ooh. Hey. Hey. Wow. Looks great in here. Ta-da. So what game are we playing? Yeah, let's do it. Come on, join us on the couch. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another exciting game of Books of the Bible Survival. In this game, you must quickly decide between two books of the Bible. You can hold up one hand for book number one and two hands for book number two. Choose carefully, though. Select the correct book, and you're still in the game. Select the wrong book, and you can keep playing, but please take a seat. If you're still standing after all ten questions, you will be crowned the ultimate Books of the Bible Survivor Champion! Once we start the survival challenge, you'll only have five seconds to answer each question. So everyone, please stand up, do a big stretch, and let's begin! Which book is the first book of the Bible? Raise one hand for Genesis, raise two hands for Ruth. The answer is Genesis. 
Next question. Which book is the last book of the Bible? Raise one hand for Mark. Raise two hands for Revelation. The answer is Revelation. Question number three. Which book is the first book in the New Testament? Raise one hand for Matthew. Raise two hands for Jonah. The answer is Matthew. Here's the next question. Which of these books is in the Old Testament? Raise one hand for Romans. Raise two hands for Proverbs. The answer is Proverbs. Well done. Now, which book is the second book in the Bible? Raise one hand for Daniel. Raise two hands for Exodus. The answer is Exodus. Next question. Which book is the second to last book in the Bible? Raise one hand for Luke. Raise two hands for Jude. The answer is Jude. Now, which book is the last book in the Old Testament? Raise one hand for Obadiah. Raise two hands for Malachi. The answer is Malachi. Moving on, which book is part of the Gospels? Raise one hand for Luke. Raise two hands for Ephesians. The answer is Luke. You've almost made it to the end. Oh, which book tells the story of a den of hungry lions? Raise one hand for Jonah. Raise two hands for Daniel. The answer is Daniel. This is the final question. Which book is about a man who loses everything. Raise one hand for Nehemiah. Raise two hands for Job. The answer is Job. Amazing job to everyone who is still standing. You really know your books of the Bible and you have earned the title of the ultimate book. Guys, do you smell that? <laughs> yeah, actually, it smells like something's burnt. Oh, oh my gosh! Panic aerobics, panic aerobics! The cupcakes! They're burning! They're burning! I'm sorry, she say panic aerobics. <laughs> yes, it's <laughs> this thing she does. She panics and then she does aerobics. It's crazy. Oh. I burned the cupcakes? How did I burn the cupcakes? I never burn anything when I bake. Deep breaths. Okay, take long, deep breaths. <sighs> okay, now she's going to explode. I mean, she's got to be super angry. Yeah, and look at her forehead. Is that a vein popping out? Hey, it's okay. I made extra cake batter. And the oven is still hot, so... I can make a second batch of cupcakes that are not burned. Ah, how is she not furious? What is going on? Honestly, I have no idea. Yeah, I know. Burning cupcakes is pretty upsetting. And yeah, that's definitely my angry vein popping out. But 
what's the point in losing my temper? Raging isn't going to make the cupcakes any less burned. In no time! Wait, I am not ready to watch what happens next. It's painful. Ugh. Let's take a worship break. Your face is all that I see You're alive. 
I'm feeling so alive with you You're making all things brand new So crazy to believe that Nothing's ever gonna come between All the love that you have for me It's a new day forgot to put the skateboard away when we were cleaning up the room. Well, here it comes. She's gonna, She's gonna rage. Oof, it's about to get scary. Nah, just kidding. <sighs> oh, that really hurt. Michael, you need to be more careful with where you leave your things. I know, I'm sorry. I completely forgot to clean that up when we were cleaning the room. Are you okay? I am, thanks. Okay. How? Just how? How is Melissa not giving in to her anger? I don't know, but we probably should just ask her. Oh, that's a great idea. What yeah. didn't I think of that? <laughs> hey, Melissa. Hey, guys. What's up? Uh, how are you doing that? Oh, well, when I was cleaning, I found a second remote. So now I can pause and play and rewind and do all that cool stuff, too. No, he means, how are you not super angry? Yeah. Oh, well, I was super angry. Didn't you see my angry vein popping out? I can rewind if you want. I told you that was her angry vein. But wait, 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 wait. How come you didn't yell or scream or break anything? Ah, uh, because I didn't let my anger control me. I wanted to act like David when he was caught in that cave with Saul. Check it out. The Miracle of Mercy, David and Saul. This is David. Hey. David was a shepherd who lived in Israel. David was chosen by God to be the next king of Israel when he was just a boy. But David had to wait a very long time until that promise would come true because there was another king of Israel named Saul. Saul was strong and tall and looked like everything a king should be. But Saul did not follow God like he was supposed to. And for that reason, God chose to take the kingdom from Saul's family and give it to David's. David became a great warrior. Arrgh! And everyone in the kingdom loved David. Oh? This made Saul jealous, and Saul hated David because he thought he would try to kill him and take the throne from his family. So Saul wanted to kill David. Whoa! Saul hunted David, but he couldn't catch him. One day, Saul heard that David was in the wilderness of En Gedi, So Saul gathered 3,000 of his skilled fighters and went to find and kill David. During Saul's search for David, he went in a cave to relieve himself. Well, this very cave was the one where David and his men were hiding. And when David's men saw that Saul was unaware that David was there and unable to defend himself, they said, Now's your chance, David. This is God telling you that he will give you your enemy to do with as you wish. So David crept forward and cut off a piece of Saul's robe. But then David began to think that it was not right for him to take Saul's life. For no matter how much hardship and difficulty Saul had caused him, it was still not right for him to hurt the one who God had placed over Israel. So David told his men to back off, and he did not let them kill King Saul. 
They waited until after Saul had left the cave. And then David ran out of the cave and shouted after Saul, My king, why do you listen to people who say I am trying to harm you? Look, I cut it off, but I didn't kill you. This proves that I am not trying to harm you and that I have not sinned against you, even though you've been hunting me. David went on to promise that he would never harm Saul. David said that God would be the one to protect David and to rescue him from Saul's power. Saul said, Is that really you, David? And he began to cry. Saul said, You are a better man than I. You have been amazingly kind to me today, for when God put me in a place where you could have killed me, you didn't do it. Who else would have done this? And now I realize that you are surely going to be king, and the kingdom of Israel will flourish under your rule. But promise me that when that happens, you will not kill my family. So David promised that he would not hurt Saul's family, and they left each other in peace. Now Saul continued to cause difficulty in David's life. But David kept his promise, and in time, David did become king of Israel. David was dearly loved by God, and Israel did flourish under his rule because David did everything that God wanted him to do, and he was a man after God's own heart. Oh, so that's why you didn't lose your temper. <laughs> yeah, even though you got angry, you didn't allow that anger to control you. Exactly. It's not realistic to think that because you're a Christian, you won't get mad. Everyone gets mad. Even Jesus got mad. The important thing is what you do in those moments when you're angry. You always have a choice. Either you allow the anger to control you, and that's when you might say or do things you later regret, or you have self-control and make the conscious choice to keep your cool. That's right. David kept his cool when he found himself in a cave with Saul. It would have been super easy to just kill Saul right there and there. But David loved God so much that he didn't act in anger. He wanted to please God, and that meant keeping his anger in check. That's right. If we love God and want to please Him, we shouldn't act in anger either. By the power of the Holy Spirit, we can have self-control over our anger. So the lesson here is simply don't be controlled by your anger. And now that you know my secret, let's just skip ahead to the happy ending. Oh my goodness, Melissa! These cupcakes smell delicious! That's because they're not burnt! Oh my <laughs> gosh, no they're not. I'm just thankful that I made extra batter. Oh yeah, they do smell so good. Alright, so what are we going to do next? Ooh, I have an idea. Why don't we watch the weekly episode of Know That Verse? Yes, that's right, it's about time. Yes, and I have a feeling that somebody's gonna get pied in the face. Of course, like always. Let's just hope that if they get pied, they are not controlled by their anger. Ooh, well said, Melissa, well said. Let's watch. Let's do it. Welcome to Know That Verse. My name is Kelly and I'm the host of this game show. As you already know, each week a new contestant has a chance to recite the memory verse and win a million, billion, gazillion dollars. Unfortunately, nobody has been able to do it. Instead, both of our contestants have made terrible errors and received a pie to the face. Here is the verse our contestants need to know. God's power has given us everything we need to lead a godly life. 2 Peter 1, 3a. Now, let's bring out this week's contestant, Caitlin! <laughs> Caitlin, how do you feel? Well, I'm feeling a little nervous, actually. No need to be nervous. Now, let's hear what you've got. God's power has given us everything we need to live a godly life. 2 Peter 1, 3a. See, I told you there was no need to be nervous. You did great. Unfortunately, your shoes were untied, and that automatically disqualifies you from winning. You know what that means. Ooh, that 
that was a nail biter. Will anyone ever win? Come back next week for another round of Know That Verse. For now, it's time for some good announcements. <sighs> Welcome to SGA, some good announcements. My name is Kelly, and in case you're wondering, no, I am not the host of everyone's favorite game show, Know That Verse. We just happen to look exactly alike and have the same name. Well, speaking of the memory verse, you need to learn it. It's one of our eight challenges found on this month's challenge card. What else is on the challenge card? I'm glad you asked. This month, we are asking you to watch all five episodes of CF Kids Online. Whether it's at a campus or at your home, we don't want you to miss a thing. You will also want to complete the family mission, New Year's Prayer. Use this prayer map to help you pray. You can get the prayer map from your local campus or by downloading it online at cfmiami.org slash parents. If you complete seven out of the eight challenges, you will win a mystery prize and you will be entered into a raffle to win your very own Beyblade. Ooh yeah. So to recap, watch CF Kids online, learn your memory verse, invite a friend to church and complete the family mission. You can do this. Breaking news, this is a very important announcement. I repeat, this is a very important announcement. On the weekend of January 29th and 30th, we will premiere the 100th episode of CF Kids Online. Cue the party music. Make sure you tune in. It will be unlike any episode ever shown before. The 100th episode celebration will be jam packed with surprises and you don't want to miss it. That was awesome. But I think I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and go outside and skateboard for a little bit. Oh, yeah. about that. You wanna come with me? No. I think when I slipped and fell, I, your skateboard went flying and it crashed and I think it cracked. What? Now, now, Michael, don't be controlled by your anger. Well, would it be okay to use the remote control and press the rewind button before Melissa slipped and broke the skateboard? No can do. You're just gonna have to use self-control here. Okay, okay, okay. I can do it. Just give me a second. Give me a second. God, I feel pretty angry right now and um, I don't want to be controlled by my emotion of anger, God. Help me to not lose control and help me to be, well, still keep my cool, God. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, let's press play. All right. Okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay. Melissa, it's gonna be fine. Actually, I should apologize. It's, it's my fault that the skateboard was out there in the first place. We, I didn't get it cleaned up when we were cleaning up the room. So I'm sorry that you actually fell because that was my fault, I'm sorry. Wow, Michael, I'm so proud of you. You weren't controlled by your anger. It wasn't easy, but. And, and? Maybe we can go to the garage and fix it. Oh, okay. That's a good idea. I think that we might have just what you need. Come on, oh, let's go let's check go. it. Let's go, let's do it. Oh. 